The military operation of the Ukrainian armed forces in the Kursk region has been going on for the eighth day. Kiev has brought two more new brigades into the battle, the 82nd and the 95th. Western military experts write that there are currently six Ukrainian armed forces brigades and two more battalions in the Kursk region. In total, there are about 15,000 Ukrainian servicemen, Forbes reports. Now Kyiv will be able to extend its offensive, even if Moscow transfers reinforcements to the Kursk region. Military expert Rob Lee said Kyiv had to withdraw some of its battalions from Pokrovsk, Chasovyar and Toretsk. However, a statement by Kyiv regarding the creation of a military administration in the Kursk region indicates that Ukraine intends to be there for a long time. Russia has deployed nine motorized, airborne and Arctic brigades and they outnumber the Ukrainian defenders. At the same time, the Kremlin is not going to curtail its military operations in Donbass. At the same time, employees of the Ukrainian Center for Strategic Studies announced the appearance of new battalions of the Russian armed forces in Donbass. The front line in Kursk is still changing as the fighting is taking place not so much in open areas as in forests. Ukrainian defenders have already captured many conscripts and the Russian armed forces are relying more on ambushes in forested areas. Experts write that Russia has already lost several of its aircraft in Kursk and Ukraine has lost one MiG aircraft. To stop the advance of the Ukrainian armed forces, the Kremlin will have to transfer additional troops to the Kursk region. Sahi Bratchuk, spokesman for the Ukrainian Volunteer Army South, reveals what troops Russia is likely to have moved from southern Ukraine to the Kursk region and whether this is felt at the front. It hasn't made a drastic impact yet, and it's not something that happens overnight. We understand and see this. Regarding the Kursk region, their North Troop Group is stationed there, attempting to counter Ukrainian forces using internal reserves, possibly setting up the first and even a second defense line. As for the units moved towards Kursk from the south, we suspect these might be airborne troops from the Kherson area, though I stress this information needs verification. Russian troops are constantly shifting in this region, maybe up to two battalions, but that's probably the most we can confirm at this point, Bratchuk stated. Additionally, he noted that the Russians might have redeployed some of their troops from the Zaporizhia region. In the Kursk region, the Ukrainian armed forces are using Challenger 2 tanks, which were supplied by Great Britain. This was reported by the Sky News TV channel. It is noted that Britain supplied Kiev with a total of 14 such tanks. Sky News has no information about how many Challenger 2 tanks were used by the Ukrainian armed forces during the raid into the Kursk region. These vehicles are operated by servicemen of the 82nd Airborne Assault Brigade of the Ukrainian Armed Forces, the TV channel reports, citing a source. In total, 14 such combat vehicles were provided to Kiev. However, according to military journalist Alexander Zamovsky, the Ukrainian Armed Forces currently have 7 Challenger 2 out of 14, the rest were destroyed by the Russian Armed Forces. The Times also reported, citing a representative of the UK Ministry of Defence, that the British government had given Ukraine permission to use the supplied weapons for operations in the Kursk region. This permission covers all types of weapons, with the exception of the long-range Storm Shadow missiles. Since February 2022, the UK has provided Ukraine with approximately 9.7 billion US dollars in military aid. In addition to Challenger 2 tanks and Storm Shadow missiles, the British side has transferred AS-90 self-propelled howitzers, M270 multiple launch rocket systems and NLAW anti-tank missile systems to Kiev. Earlier, Russian war correspondents reported the destruction of a Challenger 2 tank in the border zone of the Kursk region. The strike was carried out using a Lancet 3 Kamikaze drone, which led to the detonation of the tank's ammunition. Місто Судже, Курська область, 13 серпня, евакуація цивільного населення. Заявки приймаються в Дірект, соцмереж, Інстаграм, Тікток, або кожен вторник, 
четверг, суботу, о 10 ранку зустрічаємо людей, забираємо людей з магазину «Лукошка», що в центрі міста Суджи. Якщо ви втомилися від кровавого московського режиму, ми вас врятуємо. Український народ з радістю предоставить вам своє житло на прикордонних територіях Харківщини та Сумщини. Звісно, якщо ще їхні будинки не зруйнувала російська артилерія. Ну а я в даний момент знаходжусь на Донеччині, де ми продовжуємо рятувати російськомовне населення від російських бойовиків. Прикинь? Місто Суджи, Курська область, 13 серпня, евакуація цивільного населення. Заявки приймаються в Дірект, соцмереж, Інстаграм, Тікток, або кожен вторник, четверг, суботу, о 10 ранку зустрічаємо людей, забираємо людей з магазину «Лукошка», що в центрі міста Суджи. Якщо ви втомилися від кровавого московського режиму, ми вас врятуємо. Український народ з радістю предоставить вам своє житло на прикордонних територіях Харківщини та Сумщини. Звісно, якщо ще їхні будинки не зруйнувала російська артилерія. Ну а я в даний момент знаходжусь на Донеччині, де ми продовжуємо рятувати російськомовне населення від російських бойовиків. Прикинь?